Hello, precious partners and friends. This is Pastor Rich, your world-class encourager, encouraging the saints of God from coast to coast and border to border, letting you know that Jesus Christ is Lord and he loves you. He's concerned about you. He has a purpose. He has a plan. He has a destiny for your life in the name of the Lord. You say, how can you say that? Because the Bible says in Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for evil or disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. I thank God for all of these uh, prophets and prophetesses on the call right now as we're encouraging the people in regards to soul winning. I believe the heartbeat of God is soul winning. A lot of people preach, a lot of people are great teachers, a lot of great revivalists out there, but there's some, it amazes me, and I've seen people that walk right past a person because they may be hardcore or because they may look a certain way, and they will not even tell them about the hope of glory that's inside. And I believe that Jesus is the answer for hurting humanity even today. And so how to become an effective soul winner? Every one of us have been called to win souls. And I want to let you know at VRC uh, is a ministry that's focused on soul winning. We're not a social club. Uh, and thank God for the coffee and the donuts and the Starbucks. The problem is when you stop bringing the Starbucks, you stop bringing the donuts. Someone said the other day, well, why can't we have barbecue uh, in the house of God and barbecue sauce? Because uh, that's not uh, the, the platform for that. And again, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, celebrating and eating. But listen, we got to get hungry for the things of God and hungry for the word of God, because it's the word of God that will bring that transformation that we need even in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's more than just a being position driven. It amazes me how people are so caught up in positions and titles. When you're blessed and you're walking in the heavenlies, listen, you already have a position. You already have a title. You are anointed and called of God in the name of Jesus. The Bible states, he or she that wins souls is wise. And we would rather people be concerned about the things of God than to be position driven in the name of the Lord. And, and let me say this, we've got to be a witnessing church. I mean, our ministry is a global ministry, not just in our, our city, but around the nation. We have people that are in different states that are helping us to propagate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because I believe in this hour and time, we have to have prophetic uh, uh, shepherds. Oh, yes, shepherds. Somebody called me a German shepherd. I was trying to figure out. They said, you got German in you and you're a shepherd, but I'm an under shepherd representing uh, the great shepherd. And we have to have prophetic ears to hear and to have sound doctrine. There's so much foolishness that's being propagated even uh, around the nation. And I believe we got to know what we believe and why we believe it and be able to communicate it in a compassionate, loving way with simplicity uh, in Jesus name. So what's the will of God? Uh, let's go to the scripture. First Timothy chapter two, verses one through four. I urge you then, therefore, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Uh, you know, I was on the radio some time ago, and one of the pastors says, I, mean, I was offended because you pray for all uh, parties. Well, I said, if you're a kingdom uh, uh, man and woman of God, uh, you understand that God is not a Democrat. <laughs> He's not a Republican. He's not a Tea Party. He's not an independent party. And I believe that we shouldn't vote just because of, of the color of a person's skin. We have to be prophetically sound based upon scripture. And we pray for whoever is in authority because the word of God says it. And I believe the, the portion of the word that you believe is the portion that's going to work. And so Every one of us as soul winners, we pray for the people of God. It says for kings and queens and for those that are in authority, that we may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And this is uh, good and it pleases God, our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. It's God's will. It's God's purpose for every human being on planet earth. I don't care if they're crip, blood, northern, southern. I don't care if they practice sin or they got victory over sin. Whatever the case may be, God loves sinners. And we don't have to go back to Hebronic teachings. Thank God for that teaching to give us revelation and understanding. But the, the New Testament fulfilled the Old Testament. And John says the Lamb of God came to take away the sins of uh, the world. So then he goes on. 
in 2 Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Thank God that he is a promise keeper. When he says something, you can take it to the bank. Uh, the check is good. It's not going to bounce. He means what he says. As my grandfather uh, uh, in the years past would say, he means what he says and says what he means. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And why did Jesus come uh, to the world? The heart of the gospel, John chapter 3, verse number 16, for God so loved the world. And I believe that is so important. And we thank God that we have members that are part of our e-church in different states that are, are helping us with this global mandate to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. But even in our local centers, we never want to be bougie and stuck up. Y'all got to pray for me with the people that have that religious spirit. They walk in such a uh, cocky, uh, prideful, full of themselves, that they're the only ones that's anointed. No, respectfully, sir, respectfully, man, you have a religious spirit and there's no real anointing there because there's no real yokes destroyed. Uh, there's hearts are not being changed. Families are not being put back together. God, uh, he came uh, to bring healing, to bring redemption, reconciliation, restoration, uh, through the finished work of the cross. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And can I submit to you, uh, we're teaching a series right now in regards of the doctrine of hell. Hell is real. The good news is hell was designed for Satan and uh, one third of the angels that fell. Uh, but let me say this, there is a real hell. There's a real heaven and God designed for us to go to heaven. That's why he sent his son to be that substitutionary sacrifice for our sins. I was talking to someone the other day say, well, I don't have any sins. Well, I said, I had a lot of them and he paid my sin debt. Aren't you so thrilled? and grateful, uh, dearly beloved, about that in the name of so. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Then he goes on verse number 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn. And that word condemn in the Greek is krino. It means to judge or to damn. God did not come. Ah, now we know the second coming. He's coming with his posse uh, to rule and reign. And of course, we're going to be with him. But he says, but to save uh, the world through him, Jesus. There's not many ways to heaven. I know that's not popular to say, but again, we believe the Bible to be the final authority concerning all manner. We believe the, the Bible to be the success book. Uh, matter of fact, the Bible has sold more copies than any religious leader, any political leader, any motivational speaker. As of this hour and this year and this moment, it's the all-time bestseller. And so he came that we would experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. That, that's what blessings is all about. When you're really blessed, Psalms chapter one says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He's like that tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth it shall and will prosper. But there's a contrast between the godly and the ungodly. And that's why the law of association is very important. You want to be hooked up with people that are walking in the laws of God, walking in the statutes of God, walking in the precepts of God, not by their feelings, but by the revelation of the word of God. And I pray today, and those that are on the call with us, uh, and again, uh, this is an extended study of several hours, but we just wanted to give you an abbreviated form to get excited about soul winning. I pray that God gives you an appetite uh, for men and women to be those fisher of men in the name of the Lord. I, I got to read a little bit more. Give me a few more minutes here uh, again. And so he says, for the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So, uh, what about the first disciples in Matthew chapter 4? verses 17 through 22, uh, the New International Version, it says, from that time uh, of Jesus began to preach. And the word preach means to publish, to proclaim. And, and, he, and notice what he did. He says, repent. Now, that word repent is not, it's a curse word in some communities, but repent is a good word. Now, I've learned my, before my grandfather died, he says, son, you'll be all right as long as you live a repentance lifestyle. Don't let nobody, uh, 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 
come against you in regards to whatever you've been involved in. Listen, tell on yourself, go to the cross, repent, live a repentance lifestyle, stay broken before Almighty God. It says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. And then verse number 18, and Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee. And I've been over there many years ago. Uh, we would be over there on those mission fields with uh, uh, the late Dr. Sumrall and Pete's uh, part of the Lassie and, and Dr. David Sumrall helped uh, dis, uh, uh, actually baptize many people in the Jordan River. And there was during that time, there wasn't that many uh, denominations that were over there. But I thank God we have a lot of denominations that are hitting those mission fields strong. But let me say this, as we were on the Sea of Galilee, we went to a restaurant and they were eating fish. I'm from California. Uh, I cut the head off. We gut it. But they had eyes and head. They said, that's the best type of the fish. I said, well, I'm not eating that fish. But let me say this. It was a beautiful place. And so what God was teaching me in this text here, he says, and I saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother, Andrew, and they were casting a net into the lake for they were fishers. And notice what he says, come follow me. Can you imagine that uh, their uh, family business, they're experts at what they do. They drop their, their nets. They follow uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, I've come, listen to this, and I will make you fishers of men. So yes, they're professional fishermen, a successful uh, fishing business, but now he shifts gears prophetically to move into the spirit and says, now spiritually, you're going to be fishers of men. God is calling right now. There's a prophetic call uh, 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 from coast to coast, state to state, around the nation, around the globe, says, I'm looking for spiritual fishers of men uh, that will win souls. I believe that evangelism should be our passion, but souls have got to be our mandate. I think that uh, our learning centers should be training centers, uh, not clubs. <laughs> we shouldn't have clubs. We should have uh, transformation centers, empowerment centers uh, like never before. And then he says, very powerful stuff. Listen to this. And they were casting a net into the lake, but they were fishers. And he says, come now, follow me. And Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets, followed him, going on from there. And he saw uh, two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brothers, John, and they were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. And Jesus called them. And immediately, they didn't need a word from a prophet. They didn't need to go get confirmation. They were so dialed in to the Spirit of God. And I pray that God would take the dullness out of your ears. He would take the blinders off your eyes, that you will have prophetic eyes to see uh, a snake in, in the grass, to see even uh, years before things uh, transpire. Matter of fact, that's why the Holy Spirit should be your best friend. He should be your secret weapon because he will reveal things to you even before they come up on planet earth in the name of the Lord. Well, listen, I, I'm out of word today, uh, but uh, we're not out of, uh, I'm not out of word, let me clarify that, out of time today. We got lots of word, but we just uh, wanted to share that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank every one of you that are on this uh, session today, praying for us, and uh, we're just equipping uh, our influencers uh, as they are touching the nation around the globe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good to see you uh, on your security job out there on the dangerous streets of America. We pray divine protection because there's so much lawlessness and disrespect and killing. Thank you and our first responders and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for all of the men and women that will listen to this telecast. We pray that there will be an impartation of your anointing that will come through the screens that will just play, build up our inner man and set our souls on fire, burning with the Holy Ghost. And we bless you. We praise you. Let me say this. Maybe you're listening and you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse number uh, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. On your best day, we still miss the mark. But I thank God he doesn't leave us bleeding. He's He gives us hope. And in the sixth chapter, he says, uh, listen, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Why don't you pray this prayer uh, with us in the name of the Lord? Close your eyes and pray with me. Say, dear God in heaven, forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. 
you were buried and you rose from the dead on the third day god the father raised you from the dead and right now lord jesus i invite you into my heart as lord and savior now some people say well there's more than that yes I believe that God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues according to Acts 2 and 4, but this is the beginning. Now you need discipleship. We have a lot of discipleship training. If you're interested, just uh, send it. We have a lot of training online that will equip you, empower you, where you will know what you believe and why you believe it and be able to communicate it. We're talking about sound doctrine, not a bunch of, of false doctrine and so forth. We love you, family. We're praying for you. And again, thank each and every one of you. We bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless. Love you, family. God bless. Yes, sir. God bless you too, man of faith, man of power, man of the word, man of wisdom. In Jesus' name.